In today's rapidly evolving digital landscape, AI is both a threat and an ally. Join me as we deep dive into how artificial intelligence is revolutionizing industries and transforming the job markets such as mine, changing how we create our digital presence, discover how to leverage AI to fulfill your skills gaps and stay ahead because it is affecting every one of us in the economy in this digital revolution. Don't miss out on essential insights. I created a question and answer format. Navigate the future of work for yourself, for your family, to make sure that you are well prepared for the future. Today, there is a lot of uncertainty in the market and the business confidence index is dropping. You can see in the 2008 and after the pandemic, right now we are also seeing similar effects right now. Even though there are multiple wars all over the world, the main cause of the businesses unable to make the decisions is the AI is affecting every department in an enterprise. One example of a group affected by AI revolution is consultants who are observing these advancements from their positions all over the world. With increasing capabilities of artificial intelligence, there is a growing concern among consultants that are potential for AI to take over certain tasks and roles traditionally performed by humans. This shift could have significant implications for the consulting industry, which I am also in as AI technology continues to evolve and automate various processes. Everywhere and everyone is going to get affected as all of the departments in the enterprise are going to use the AI. You have to understand no role or no position is sacred. You need to see they are all going to be changed and they are all going to be able to evolve if they can't evolve they won't cease they will cease to exist ai is a threat but an ally at the same time so we have to understand how we can leverage it and create a digital presence for us so we can use it as an ally and i will make sure that you guys go through this in a way that you can fill all your skills gaps with the framework that i will provide for you What is the framework? We have to make sure we have a comprehensive guide created for us. We leverage them, what we learn, and we update it as we go along because it is going to help us experiment the new prompts and we will be able to utilize what we already have. I always have a title and a prompt at the bottom of all of my guides. Artificial intelligence, AI is also linked to fire. I have linked it, nobody is linking it other than myself. A powerful tool that can be either incredibly beneficial or dangerously destructive, like this prompter that I'm talking to. So that is the reality though. Sometimes it is like the fire, if I can use it well. If you guys understand I'm using the prompter, it is not that well. Uh, right now I have to look at the screen and remove one of the items because it's on top of the prompter. So. The AI is the same though. If you learn how to use it, it makes your life easier. Otherwise, you will just create a cringe. So let's continue with our fire analogy. Just as fire has revolutionized human civilization by providing warmth, enabling cooking and forging tools, we can also easily destroy ourselves very easily with the fire. AI has potentially transformed nearly every aspect of our lives. So the fire has changed everything from the agriculture. We were able to store the food, recook it. That was the best thing ever, I guess, the fire. It can enhance medical diagnosis, optimize logistics, and even create the AI created so much garbage here. I don't think I would like to read it though, but how much like fire AI has handled with care, its misuse or lack of proper regulation could lead into privacy invasions, job displacement, even unethical dilemmas. These are all happening in the background, I guess. Even the GPT doesn't have to tell you. The key is harnessing the AI responsibly 
Meaning you have to learn the AI, how to use the AI. Yes, it's like the fire, it can burn you, but you can also cook the food with it. And everybody will use it at the same time while making the mistakes. So it is like eating the elephant. Don't be afraid of the elephant. Start somewhere and make sure that you are playing with the fire every single day. Don't place a distance between you and the fire. I need to use a prompter. I use a prompter, but I also know the downsides of the prompter. I know that you guys are at the center of the production. You guys are the main character. So I go off the script most of the time. So that is what I do. Though. I have a sticker here. It says go off the script. The understand when AI comes to your life you are the main character but you are playing this game with everybody who has the AI so start playing with everyone all at the same time welcome to the next day the t-shirt is over so let's continue content creation game is over we have to understand in the past there was all these search engine optimizations the companies were creating the content they were trying to do the user-generated content. Right now, AI has changed that game, though, because the generated pre-trained transformers are going to be able to create all the structured data that you need is going to make that game obsolete. I think the Google searches will become a very problematic place for Alphabet. And uh, if you are not already on the YouTube boat, meaning you are not an influencer already, you are going to see that it is not very easy for you to be able to create content and capitalize. The AI is going to be everywhere though, so we have to get very, very natural about this. Though. So my t-shirt has changed. It is like the AI. AI is also going to change. So you got to learn how to use the technology better to be able to leverage on this though. So what you need to ask is, what can I do to be able to leverage the AI for myself? I create a product called Delivery Pilot. And what I do is I make sure that I help the enterprises to release their software at a faster speed because I understood the AI is helping the release speeds and I can integrate to the rest of the enterprise. So that is for me the product that I'm proposing. Though everybody's product is going to be different. Don't steal my idea. So it is not easy to be able to express yourself to somebody else, such as Mariana says, let's add something onto the background, but there is the initial footages. So I know that it is not that easy for yourself to be able to articulate as well in this new world. So you have to be able to use the strategy and be able to do it. Once she moves the backdrop in a different place, the footage will change. But it takes time for us to be able to see it and be able to deliver it at the same time. That's called the real world. We start with the real world. We go to a fantasy. We want to do those fantasies. Then we go to the symbolic world. Before the symbolic world to the real world, we go through all these challenges for us. And where it comes with the AI is, AI is going to help us to be able to articulate ourselves from the symbolic world to the real world. All those changes will happen in the background. We have to keep the face and make sure that we accept and we move on. I closed myself off and I should be much closer to the camera and the background should be uh, changed uh, with ease. But the reality is right now the background will be only uh, on the black because the reality is we have the green screen we are keying that green screen and we are recording with that green screen so it won't be uh remote so i have to remove the chroma key and be able to record this one more time otherwise what we have to understand is this is like a university that everybody goes through what you learned uh has to get erased and you have to be able to restart from the beginning i know that everybody is going to the universities I'm living in Cambridge, people are spending all this money and the universities are also not ready with this AI changes. Once the AI changes are hitting the unis, most of the university degrees are becoming obsolete. That is also the other reality because once the reality changes, you are going to go through different sets of challenges. So I wouldn't be able to change the back if I don't change the production uh, in the recording set. 
Well, what is the hassle though? The hassle is the formulas are changing. Everybody has something on their mind. But uh, once the formulas are changing, people will have all the cognitive dissonance. So they wouldn't be able to change their ideas at the same time. So I changed the background to green right now. So I have the potential to be able to update it. Now what I need to do is, if I can do it on Canva, so do I need to take it to DaVinci Resolve. So it is all the changes that goes through that we have to understand. Everything gets connected to each other. While our formulas are connected to each other, right now with the rise of the GPT, we will be able to learn and execute and change our formulas. We are not only stuck with the unit degrees that we got, There is going to be a big shift from an I-shaped person who is an expert in one field to a T-shaped and eventually to an M-shaped person. I'm speak, uh, skipping the pie-shaped person because with the rise of the GPT, we need more, not specialists, but generalists who can run the machines, who can use the robots and who can use the AI. It is definitely going to transform the enterprise where the enterprise are going to look for people who can deliver the exponential requirements. They are going to not ask you just to be a tester, just to be a QA, just to be able to do the development, just to be able to release. They are going to financial. They want you to be able to have multiple skills and they want you to be able to release on demand very, very easily. Once Maria asked me to be able to change the back screen, you will be able to do it. You can tell them that I already told her that there's 30 rows, there's all these things that's going on, there's everything that's going to fail in the background. You really can't do that. What you have to understand is once they are expanding, you have to take the calculator in your hand, this time this is the AI, and be able to use the AI and be able to work with those demands. Think about we are going to the stars and we are setting up a new colony in Mars, in Andromeda, we are going to have more exponential and demanding tasks. Don't think that you are going to 9 to 5 working in an enterprise doing basic tasks. Their tasks are also going to exponential and they are going to be very, very demanding. The web 1, people understood that they had to go to the web. With the web 2, they understood that they need to be able to keep the state and make sure that they can work with much more complex data structures. With the AI, right now they understood that they should be able to combine all these complex data structures together with the actions though, so they can create much more meaningful stuff though. And what we have to get is, in the new current era, we have to become very, very proactive in self-learning. We able to articulate ourselves and we have to get involved and build our strategy with everyone so that is the core framework we have to understand the technology we have to be able to articulate ourselves and we have to be able to have a strategy based for us so everybody's strategy is different everybody is going to articulate themselves in a different way and everybody will use a different technology stack and that is very very normal So the skills gaps are widening faster than ever. Once I change the microphone, the microphone quality has changed dramatically. I wouldn't be able to explain it to somebody who is just giving me the idea of changing the background. They are doing their best of will. And that's a good thing that you want the feedback from them though, but they won't be able to get the, all the formulas that is behind in a video production set, which you have to change the microphone, you have to change the first scenes, everything is getting connected to each other, it's going to break the flow. The skills gaps will get widened like this in every place in the enterprise. I am a basic developer and I want to be able to release this software to the production and what's going to happen is my skills gaps are going to be the main factor for to be able to stop the enterprise. So we have to understand the enterprises will get stopped by their weakest uh, link, which is called the theory of constraints. We have to understand if we can 
leverage the effective communication by using the AI, by being able to transform ourselves from the analog to the digital version and be able to get the feedback from the AI, that person in the development will be able to understand what they need to do to be able to release the software in a much faster fashion because the AI is like an assistant for us, jack of all trades, master of none, but they will be able to help us to be able to communicate with us, but we have to be able to collect the feedback from them and say, okay, this is what I need to do. Once I change the scene, I also have to change the camera. I have to change the microphone. If I'm a developer guy, if I change a piece of code in the deployment pipeline, I also need to change these three different things, including a firewall rule as well. So that is what the AI is going to bring us. We don't, we are not anymore a silos. Right now we have the assistance and we are working in an environment where we should be able to release on demand and do these changes without getting aggravated though. So that is very, very important because the life goes on and we have to accept the situation. importance of continuous learning while we understand this widening skills gaps. We cannot stop learning though. This is not a game that you stop on Saturdays, on the weekends. This is an ongoing learning game. We came from the caves, we got the fire, we got the wheel, we got the computers, we have the AI. Right now with the AI, we are in this game of learning and learning all the time. So that is part of our life right now though. I'm Rufat, I'm a DevOps contractor from Cambridge, United Kingdom, and that is part of my job though. So I learn new technologies, I go to enterprises, I implement them. My product is the delivery pilot. So that is also my part of my life though. With the rise of the AI, I see that people are taking this very, very slowly though. But once the it hits the road and the people who have the AI versus the people who don't have the AI, we are going to see a huge disparity between them though. So that is very important that we all get the memo that we have to look at this into an existential uh, point though. The entropy is always getting to the enterprises and they are doomed to fail though, because if you don't look after any technology at the end of the day, they will fail very, very easily. We have to understand with the rise of the AI, because the technology can get updated much more easily, they have more chances to survive if they transform themselves to an AI-based world. But that transformation is not only for the coders, for the planners, it is all holistic. And what I do with the delivery pilot is I help the companies to assess their maturity to be able to say, okay, these are the things that we are missing. We are using the AI and we are fixing the action as we go on, such as right now, how am I using the AI? I'm going to read the script. I need to put it to the prompter. I need to make sure that I get the highlights. I put them to the prompter so I can be much more natural, unlike a robot and be able to read it to the camera. Right? how they can use the AI for them to be able to do their work in order to be able to do the self-learning on an ongoing basis to help the company for their exponential demands. So the demands will be exponential. They will not let you only test a single button press right now as a tester. They will ask you to write an automated test code. That is going to be the norm. In the past, the norm was you just click on a button and you are the QA. In the new world, it won't be the norm though. The norms will put themselves to a higher place. So you have to be able to meet those requirements. So what happened is I got this paper from Maria and what she's asking me, what do I need to do with these symbols? There is this real world to the fantasy world. She's right now in the United Kingdom. She has to deal with the HMRC and she has all these symbols that she has to go through. In the world of the AI, what she needs to do is she has to be able to take the phone, be able to take a picture of it and be able to do some kind of prompt engineering. 
And the thing that I will show her is to be able to use one hand, open the chat GPT, so take an image and ask the chat GPT what she needs to do step by step. Because all this paper that is generated by the home office is not clear. There are so many symbols, but there's no steps to follow. In my case, I'm creating the DevOps courses for the DevOps community and for my delivery pilot. The main thing that I'm giving is all the steps and using the GPT because for them to be able to come to the hero level will take 30 years. But if you are able to use the AI, you will be able to come here at a 10x faster time. I'm trying to help the enterprises to be able to do something called release on demand with a tool called delivery pilot. So it is also a tool that has all the integration server, all the messaging channels that helps me to reach the 10x for the enterprises, which is my release metric. So I'm looking for the enterprises, which is my release get those uh, metrics in the DevOps and my main focus is the release metric. The use case for the AI is for myself is be able to ingest the data, make it useful and turn it back to the enterprise, giving them the necessary hints so they can fix their patterns and release the software in a much faster fashion. To be able to do that, I set up the integration servers, I look into the enterprise and I do the assessments install the necessary workflows for them to be able to do this. Uh, if you are interested, go to the website and check it out. If you got questions, add me on LinkedIn and ask your questions. For myself, what I do is I have this LinkedIn page where I land 95% of my contracts and I always add new connections. As recruiters, I have students from there, I have vendor connections from there, so it is very important that there is a CV for myself, a product page on my DevOps engineering website. So I have a real interaction with the real world using a fantasy, a website, a LinkedIn profile, where the crucial role is to be able to represent what I do and what I can do for those companies so they can hire me, they can give me a contract. Using that digital presence is very, very important. If you are just an employee, that could be your CV in a Word document, but I will definitely suggest you in the rise of AI, have a LinkedIn page and make sure that you are advancing your career while you are advancing your LinkedIn page and your CV at the same time. What you are going to do is have a website, have a product, so convert yourself from the analog format to a digital format where it is packed and people can use your services. That is the whole goal of the capitalistic game for you though. For, so for me, uh, what I will do is I understood that this release on demand is my main thing. I created the courses and I make sure that I made my product based on it though. So the, my product is at the end of my sales marketing funnel, if you want to call it. And I make sure that on the top, I create YouTube videos, I create Udemy courses, then I do Thinkific courses. Every time the niche goes down and down till the delivery pilot, once I go to do the delivery pilot, it's all packed information, all of my experience. So what I suggest you to do is, have your CV in a digital format. Make sure that it's digital, it's getting updated, it's getting revisioned. Your time to a service, to a product, make sure that you have all those stages that are mapped out for you so you can easily map to the people and uh, deal with the metrics as you go. How people perceive you, you have to accept this fact though. I started accepting loss of facts at the age of 43 and I understand how people are going to engage with me is a bit robotic and that is normal though that is ultimately what you decided to do if you are going to be a knowledge worker you are going to interface the AI more and more though if you are a DevOps contractor like myself your job is going to be able to manage this AI constantly taking on new contracts what I do is I propose AI to transform their businesses to be able to do the release on demand because there are like so many contexts that I have to work on. 
uh, I need to make sure I look at all these problems as a business opportunity for myself to enhance the skills. And you have to do the same, though. Look at these problems that you are going to be able to leverage yourself with it, though. Don't panic uh, the like the Elon Musk's car or the space balls. It really doesn't matter, though, for you to panic or not to panic with the age of AI. Create yourself a product. In my case, it is the delivery pilot. You can create a course. You can build another tool. Don't create a competitor tool to mine. But if you want, you are welcome to do so, though. So you are going to be able to deliver the value to the customers, though. That should be your strategy at the end of the day because you really can't compound your time and you are competition with everybody else. And the capitalism wants you to be creative, wants you to be confident in front of the camera, not to create a cringe and help the customers though, who has custom requirements, bespoke requirements. Your job is to pack a solution so you can help as many as you can while you are having fun, hopefully, not creating something that is too painful that you have to use a blueprint from Brian Johnson. Uh, try to do it in a way uh, that it doesn't require you to go off the road. The clear communication is vital for you though, because the more clear you can communicate, if you are not ambiguous, if you are not confusing the other people, such as in this video, I'm confused because I'm using the GPT, I'm going in and out, so there might not be a process or the structure that you just envisioned though. But what I do is I make sure that everything I do is coming authentic from my world. For you, if you want to be able to become somebody that who wants to be able to use the AI and leverage yourself, you need to learn how to fill the skills gaps. You are going to always have skills gaps. I have a skills gap as a father, as a partner, to be able to help my wife and work on Saturday. So it is not easy. You always need to learn how to learn. And AI is one of the best tools right now who can create a structure, especially in the symbolic world, and guide you through with it, though. What I do is I install the GPT to my laptop, to my phone, to make sure that I can always tap into those symbols and create myself a structure that I need, though, because uh, other people's structures and the structure that you need at that time versus a structure that you read in a book might not be overlapping all the time. But if you learn how to use the GPT, how to be able to use the prompts, you will be able to come up and move on, though. That is the critical part, though. You need a CV in German. The GPT will be able to create you a CV in German. If this was 10 years ago, you needed to find a friend who speaks German or go to a translation office, maybe ask Google Translate to do a bad translation. Right now, those kind of symbolic problems are going to be the things of the past, though. We have to think about, all right, we are going head on with the AI and what you need to do to become a hero in your own storyline. The AI or no AI is not very important though. What you need to understand is how much time you are going to put into your network is the key though. Because at the end of the day, you are going to get a job, you are going to sell a product and you have to be able to construct this in a way you can grow though. Kiyosaki, Robert Kiyosaki has a guide being an employee, small business, big business and being an investor. What you can do is start as an employee build something as small, learn how to do a business, move it into a big business and ask people to collaborate with you to invest in your time though. I think that's a good framework for you to be able to interact with the AI, use it as a tool for yourself to be able to create non-living assets for you though because once you start creating a digital presence, you understand that you can convert yourself into a product and a service and this is a challenge, though. And the challenge is all connecting of the dots, though. The GPT gives you the structure that you need, especially in the symbolic world. I'm always coming back to symbolic world, that you can explain your fantasy and you can explain your problems. It's going to put out what you need to do as a roadmap 
for you to be able to handle it. Such as if I get stuck with this camera, I will be able to ask which menu do I need to go, write me step by step, it will create me a step by step approach. Making sure that you close the bridge in the skills gap though, so that is everything that you need to understand. The AI is going to create a gap between people though, and the way for you to be able to use the fire is not to burn yourself, but use the fire to cook your food. For you to be able to cook it, you need to understand, such as if you are a script writer, you are going to write your scripts and you are going to do your presentations by using the AI. So AI has to become a part of your tool sets. You don't want to fight against the AI, but you want to turn the AI to a partner of yours. That is very, very critical. Once we understand the problem and what we are going to go through, our roadmap becomes much easier though. So for me, I got contracts. I have a contract CV. I rewrote my CV uh, for the contract. So that is what I do though. So you have a website. You need to be able to rewrite your website with the GPT. You are sending emails. Send the emails with the GPT. Make sure that you customize every time with a workflow such as I do that on the delivery pilot every time there's a new task that comes in I use the GPT to create a custom text to be able to send it to the customer so the concept is we have to understand this is going to become a part of our life and we are all playing in this matrix in the symbolic world where we are all the players though and there's a new game that gets introduced where we should be able to decode and encode in a very, very, very fast way though. In the past, learning English was important. Right now, I ask my kids to learn the AI every single day, such as they ask me a question, I will make sure that they go and ask the Alexa. They're able to see it on the TV, on the Alexa screen. So it becomes their everyday workflow though. You have to make sure you put the AI into your everyday workflow. Oh, 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 I was going to say we need a comprehensive approach. If I'm talking to a guy that's a friend in a pub that I need the conference confidence to be able to deliver this text, I need to understand uh, some of the key parts though. Yes, there are all these opportunities and you have an audience to be able to deliver all of the process though that you are doing. There. Everybody is doing something else though. You don't have to be an IT person to be able to watch this video. But if you are in IT and you are using the GPT, this is going to help you a lot. In myself, I updated all of my LinkedIn, all my LinkedIn projects to make sure that I went through with the GPT. I can't update the Twitter though because Twitter doesn't let me update my content, but I can definitely update my WordPress. I soon realized there are all these limitations in my journey though. So I understand, all right, I can do some of the updates in some parts, some of the parts I cannot update. So I understood that I need to make sure that I separate my personal brand the communication and the brand system, my product system, different than each other. So all of these tools require me to do something different. In the beginning, I'm putting everything to all these different tools. I started with the Notion. Then I moved on to WordPress, but I was very ambiguous. Maybe I'm still ambiguous in this video that I suspect, but I hope you guys get it though. My job is for you guys to be able to get it. I might have all these 30 years of IT experience for myself, but the reality is I found it challenging and it's hard to be able to express yourself just in Notion though. To be able to create the videos from there was also a big issue for myself. So what I did is I started to go back to the handwritten format as much as possible, then moved it to WordPress. So I understood that format in the WordPress is the way to go. Then I'm moving the content to Canva, then I'm moving the content to Udemy, Thinkific, or Skillshare, or to YouTube. So in the past, I could only be an I-shaped person and only do one thing, such as be the tech guy, software developer, and my life is done, or be a salesperson, my life is done. But right now, with the rise of the AI, nobody can say I will be an I-shaped person. 
You can't even be a T-shaped person though, just to one thing. You are going to get uh, the requirement to become an M-shaped person. That is the part that I mentioned about being an exponential requirements. Most of the companies are going to only require people who knows the hardware, who knows the software, and who can work in multiple different environments and be able to interact with the AI. The older systems were only specific custom expert systems. Right now, we have generalist systems and we need generalists to be able to work in these systems. So as yourself, uh, you need to understand, all right, this is a new game. You need to start thinking. The best way for you to think is in order to be able to write. I found myself writing on Twitter. I found myself writing on WordPress. I also suggest you to do the same though, because once you start using all these Notion, WordPress, Canva, different tools, you will understand, all right, there is a media and the message is coming from the medium. So you will start to make the necessary connections and it will become much easier for you to be able to articulate your ideas, values and the expertise. Uh, and this is a journey, don't forget. It's not only one day that you can express yourself. You go to a coffee shop, talk to your friend and express it. No, it is a reminder that you are competing with yourself. In the past, we go to the uni, we stopped competing with our peers. Right now, everybody's strategy has to be you are competing with yourself, you are competing with everything that you learn in a fast-paced world, and you have to understand, you have to be able to compound everything and use the AI. Though. The difference between me and a new graduate will be, I will be able to ask better questions to the GPT. I will know my prompts much better uh, than the person who just graduated because they might not know though. But if that person is smart, they can ask the questions to ask though. So they go back to the first principles and they say, which questions should I wonder? Which questions should I go through? If they are able to do that, then the difference, the gap will be closed as long as they can use the hardware and the software that's necessary for the GPT, for the AI, then they will have the necessary leverage. So let's give you some key takeaways though. You are not competing with others. Your primary competing person is yourself. That is very, very critical. Your yesterday, your today. Such as for myself, I'm not going and doing enough exercise. I'm going down. I know that I'm going down and this is Physically, hopefully not mentally though, I need to make sure you are not going down physically or mentally. You are only competing with yourself. You are not competing with the machines. You are going to see sharing the knowledge consistently and establishing ourselves is going to be the main approach though because once you create this digital persona, you want to become an authority on what you are doing though. My authority is release on demand. The first person that you should aim to inspire and educate is yourself though. So it's a challenge not just to improve your product, but improve yourself all the time. Such as you go and eat ice cream. No, you don't eat ice cream. If you are having an ice cream all day long, that's a problem though. And you have to answer some basic questions. Why are you creating this content? For myself, I want to be able to fill my skills gap by helping others though. While you guys are learning, I'm learning at the same time as well though. I know that I shouldn't go and eat ice cream. So that's very, very vital though. And don't forget, you do not need millions of subscribers, such as for me, Delivery Pirates, zero to one. I want one person to be able to approve that project, not millions of subscribers. It's always good to have more people on top of the funnel though. But if you can't reach that, that's also fine though. Start where you are has to be your mindset. And the problem is the skills gap though. Don't forget, the main problem is the skills gap. There's all these skills that is in the world and you need to make sure that you contribute to yourself and to others while learning during this though. So that is very, very important. Uh, my started point is going to be different for everyone. I have 10,000 Twitter posts and I moved so WordPress, that was my starting place. You can just start from WordPress. That is very important. Start where you are. 
you are not in my place, you are in your place, so you need to start from that location. And at start, everything will look harder though, and you have to understand none of these will look very, very good. The audio might not be good, the video might not be good. Put yourself out there and talk to the people. I'm trying to be more smiley, more camera friendly. It is a hassle though. I need to think that I'm talking to a friend. The key is start small, meaning eat this elephant bite at a time. You don't need to reach millions at the start. You don't need to make millions at the start. My first salary was like 400 pounds a month. So that was my starting place. Everybody is a different starting place. Once you start sharing your work, make sure that you get the feedback. That is very, very important. And the most feedback will come from yourself. So once I finish this video, I will make sure I rewatch myself, then put the pieces together, connect the pieces together. So, so that is very, very important because I know that when I'm shooting this, you are the main character. I'm not the main character. I need to make sure you guys get something out of this video while I'm giving feedback to myself. Though. So it is like a bit complex paradox, though, but you have to be able to look into yourself do a retro respective and improve every single day. Yes, welcome to the end, though, to the act three. I'm writing everything down and this is another day, so that's all right, I guess. I have seen 46 minutes of the shooting for a 10 minute YouTube video, but that's all right, though. So what I will say is I want to make sure that I encourage you to reverse engineer everything from the bottom up. Uh, as you see right now, I'm creating this video. I'm trying to reverse engineer everything that I do in the production because at the bottom of the pipeline, you have a product and at the top, you have yourself. You are going to be uh, facing all the everybody on the funnel. You will be very closer to the real life. You will have your audience and understand in that funnel, you are going to change your context, the bounded context, the language, the keywords. They are all going to change and everybody is in a different place in this content creation game. You might be like Christopher Nolan, very close to the end. You might be just starting. You might be at the top and trying to fill that funnel. And this unique journey, as Kiyosaki mentioned, Robert Kiyosaki starts as an employee, goes to a small business, big business and an investor. You need to look into how you are going to invest your time for myself it is creating products and courses linking them to my devops business in the background small business in the background it is definitely going to be different for you uh, one of the mentors that i had said you are an actor and you are going to act as a father act as a student act as a business person that is different and you need to make sure that you have different personas for myself. I created six different personas for myself and three pillars. You need to understand you have to be energetic and generic for each persona because the use case is different. I use AI and the GPT and I make sure that I have different prompts saved for each context and I understood that I need to be able to adapt to each different situation. If I'm at the top, I'm talking more generic terms. If I'm at the bottom of the pipeline, I'm talking about the products. I am much more concrete and giving all the specifics. I have the leverage that is very important that you have to ask though. Uh, I start small at the top though. If you try to complicate the things such as what I'm doing right now, with the 60 minute video, it is counting seven more minutes. Uh, it's a problem though. I need to make sure that I express myself. I simplify and leverage what I have. Don't try to get 10 different computers at the start. If you have students like myself, uh, you need to make sure that you leverage them. I create the LinkedIn groups. I make sure that I reply to their assignments. I don't reply them on Thinkific. I reply them on LinkedIn because I want to make sure that group grows and the student learns as well, but the student also gets a leverage being able to put themselves out there doing the assignments. They get confirmation from myself. So both sides have a win-win structure. So focus on your storyline and build your presence 
based on that relative context. So once you understand that you are changing the context and the storyline changes, your life becomes much easier for you to handle and you will be able to capitalize on top of it because the funnel will get filtered out at the bottom. I'm interested in delivery pilot on demand. So what did I create though? So I created a link and the description. If you are interested in getting that, definitely go for it. Go to the DevOps engineering, check the 10x revolutionary tool for the enterprises to increase their release on demand, the release speed, which I think is one of the most important things. If you are new to the IT, you want to get a hold, we have a testing course, take the testing course. If you are already in IT, you want to become a contractor like myself, take the ultimate contractor course to become more global and to make some extra money that could interest you though. Make sure to check out the links. I giving a promotional code for them. So there's one week and a limited seats that are going to be free. Make sure to get those things free and sign up as early as possible.